you're watching Plus TV Africa to breakfast. Now we we'll take a look at the papers to understand what's beyond the headlines. We're not doing it alone. We have uh, joining us uh, the publisher of the Podium newspaper, Demola Akimbola. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Good morning, everybody. We also have Aisha Yusufu, the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls Group. A pleasure to have you join us again. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's get right to it. We have this day newspaper. Uh, fearing accountability, can steps up agitation against karma, writes Buhari to stop implementation, law not to repress any religions as presidential aid. Just above the masthead of this day, we have um, Naira gains 9.3% at parallel market on planned CBN's intervention. And of course, uh, there is a picture of the president with the speaker being proper with his face mask on. Um, speaker in the villa, that's the caption uh, to the picture there. And then, of course, INEC pledges credible elections in Edo Ondo, dismisses APC's rigging allegations against Igini. Two security aides die in a shimmerless convoy auto crash. Uh, those are some of the headlines on this day newspaper. Let's bring you in, Mr. Kimbola. Uh, fearing accountability can steps up agitation. The headline itself, the framing of it. Um, what's your take on that? Thank you once again for having me here. Uh, the headline to me is a bit mischievous. Okay, um, we followed the debate back and forth on, on, on the side of Khan, PFN, and. Uh, the leaders of the various worship centers. And basically, two things come out from what they are saying. One, capacity to implement this law. Does the federal government have the capacity? And two, the sincerity of implementation. Okay? Uh, to them, such a law is open to abuse, it's open to manipulation, it's open to being misused. All right? So those are the two key issues. I really don't think they are afraid of accountability. And if you look at it, what is the percentage of these churches or current members that are really registered? Not even up to two or three percent. Okay. So the organized sector of CAN and PFN basically is saying, look, one, you did not even consult us. I believe that for any major bill or law that's going to have such tremendous impact, government should have done some consultation. Okay, yes, government has the power to make laws without um fearing anybody, but in, 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 in modern governance, you need to do consultation with stakeholders. So you tell them what you want to do and they express their concern. I believe that this will uh, be addressed long before now. So basically, I do not agree that um, CAM members are afraid of accountability. Their problem, from my own understanding, is the capacity of the government to implement this law, the sincerity on the part of the government to share to implement this law. Okay, for instance, they have said if a particular pastor continues to criticize government uh, in such a way that government feels uncomfortable that the law could be used okay, against such um, pastor. So basically, I, I don't think it's a problem of accountability. We are looking at will this law not be abused? Will it not be manipulated? So but what if there, what if there are the checks and what, what, what um, we, should it... we, we are not afraid of being um, audited, being, 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 being probed or whatever. But we are saying due process must be followed in everything. Yeah, That's Mr. Kimbola, the argument of, uh, yeah what, what if leaders. more, more okay. checks and balances are inbuilt um, in this common law? Would it be a bit more receptive or um, is the problem... if? Um, if I understand you, where you're saying that it is not that they don't want the law, but it's a question of trust and abuse, right? Absolutely. And the, the major section that is um, being, content, being contested for is Section 3A3, okay, where the CAC has been empowered, okay, to take over the administration of, of any church that is found to be uh, on the wrong side of the law, okay? So karma itself, it is not a bad law. It's a law that is going to improve the ease of doing business in Nigeria, as we have been told. But again, how will it be implemented? We are quite aware of the fact that in this country, laws are sometimes misimplemented. They are, they are, they are, they are grossly abused, okay, to serve the whims and caprices of one or two people in government. 
So that's the own understanding of Khan's agreement. That look, what is the capacity of government? Okay, worship centers include churches, mosques, traditional worship institutions. How many of these are even registered with CSE? Very few of them. So you, you could say that it is a law that has been that has been designed to focus on a particular aspect of this segment of the Nigerian population. All right. Um Aisha, what's your what what side of the divide are you on this karma argument? <laughs> so all of all of a sudden, uh, Khan is interested in the laws being passed by the uh, National Assembly, right? Because it directly affects them now. When social media bills were being passed, they were silent. When a lot of laws uh, were being passed, Khan was silent. It was nowhere to be found. The religious bodies were silent. And uh, we have the water resources bill right now going the wrong. What is Khan saying about that? And I think. For me, this selfishness needs to stop. You cannot sit down and say it's only when laws that are affecting you happens that you now come out and begin to uh, speak, uh, speak on those issues. What are we talking about here? We are talking about the fact that there's no capacity to follow through with this law. We are talking about the fact that we don't have the system. What has Khan, what has all the other religious bodies, what, 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 what has uh, uh, IGN done to ensure that Nigeria is a place where you have system? I've always said that Martin Luther King uh, uh, was a religious leader and also uh, uh, an advocate for social justice. Uh, Malcolm X was also a religious leader and also a social advocate for uh, justice. What we have in Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned, they are really not religious leaders. We have religious slave owners. These are people who want to be lords over everything. The issue, like we all agree, karma is not the issue. We are talking about implementation. This is something that even when it comes to uh, issue of whether churches, whether mugs, uh, uh, and all of that, they, they are issue of accountability. For me, I think the, the headlines is just that, as it states. It, uh, that's just the way it is. Right okay. now, issue of accountability, they suddenly really realize that they have the voice, they have the population, and all of that. The, right. the most important thing we should focus on is the system, is the nation. Yes, a lot of people are, are fired because this can be open to abuse, just like other laws that we have. But it doesn't mean that the law itself, it's, it's not good in, in its own capacity. For, for me, personally, it's like what we have in 2012 uh, when... Uh, when um, uh, a subsidy was removed and a lot of people were angry that subsidy was removed and they said that, oh, the government is going to be corrupt, they're going to use that money corrupt. And for me, my argument then was that why we need this subsidy to be reduced, why don't we focus on ensuring we have system to tackle the corruption? And I think that's what we should be looking at here. It okay. is not about the law, it is about saying, let's improve our system to a place where it can be implemented, where it, there will be no abuse of, of that power. But for me, I, I, I just I just I just love the fact that suddenly Khan and the other religious body, although the most <laughs> maybe because they really don't have much and they are, they are not even really bothered about it, it's not affecting them Aisha, in Aisha, terms of finances and all of that. Uh, they, they are not looking at it. But the fact that they now know that they have a voice, this voice that they have right now with the population that they have, they should use it in ensuring that laws are being made in Nigeria that is for the good of the population, not just uh, not just for them to turn and feel that, oh, it, it, it's none of their business, it's only the citizens that are being affected. When Aisha, it comes to Aisha. issue of uh, uh, appointing um, trustees, removing them where there are issues of shortcomings, it's not CSC. CSC doesn't have that power. It is still the court. They will still have to have the, the court that we appoint uh, a, 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 a people to, to take over uh, the board. And we need to begin to look at situations whereby uh, if, if there are, if there are uh, corruption, where they don't, uh, either churches or mocks don't do what they're supposed to do, religious body. What we have with, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Boko Haram. Boko Haram is a, started as a religious institution. With leaders, with All right, Aisha, you, you, you certainly seem a, a to be in agreement. And they need to be checked. They need to be taxed. A lot of money is going through the air. Yeah, you, you, you are in agreement with Mr. Akimbola to a large extent. You're just, uh, I mean, expectedly concerned that they are only speaking up now because uh, it seems to affect them directly uh, when all the national matters, they haven't been as uh, focal as this one. Okay, let's see what we have on the Punch newspaper. The Water Resources Bill is back again. This time it is 
Water resources confusion over bill as reps leaders disagree over hearing. Uh, details of that is on page two of the paper. Let's look at other um, headlines before we come uh, to our guest. Uh, don't turn a door to war zone. Uh, CSOs tells politician. Yaga raises security concerns, identifies 13 flashpoints. Allegations against Edo Ondo Rex mere distraction. Uh, that's uh, INEC. I actually watched a bit of the um, video where he talked about it. Uh, I was like, yeah, let them focus on conducting credible election and not be distracted by um, the side uh, politics of it. Um, still on the camera, Can Rights Buhari says says law danger to national interest. Our guest just talked about that. And then electricity tariff hike, NLC man of this kick against it. Uh, that conversation was discussed, um, was had extensively on the breakfast uh, earlier, but I'd still like to get the unique perspective of um, our very um, honorable guests on the off the press uh, for this hour. I'll come to you, uh, Mr. Kimbola. The water resources bill uh, doesn't seem to be sitting well across board. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, well, the water resources bill, like almost any other bill in the assembly, uh, has always been a controversial issue. But again, I, 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 from the perspective of the public relations practitioner, I we've always advised government to involve in extensive consultation. Okay, the last. Um, the Eighth National Assembly had um, a public hearing, and I'm surprised that we're having this controversy at this point. Is it that what was discussed at that hearing is not being implemented? Is it that views were not properly expressed? We need to know exactly what the issues are and where they have been issue. And I, 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 I believe that the National Assembly is there. Yes, there must be agreement, there must be debate. At the end of the day, I'm sure that they will come um, to, to, to agree on what will actually be in the interest of the nation. So we, we can only appeal to them to be matured in the way they go about uh, debating the bill and, of course, to have the larger interest of the United States here at Okay, uh, uh, let, let, let me take you on the issue of the uh, electricity tariff, um, Aisha. Yeah. Uh, others are kicking against it. NLC, uh, MAN, and other um, non-governmental organizations. Where are you on this conversation? Well, for me, I, honestly, I don't even know where I am on, on this on this conversation. <laughs> you know, most times here yeah, we we talk about a uh, uh, hike, and then you see all of these uh, bodies always coming out, professional bodies coming out when there's one hike or the other. But then the hike also, we have to look at look. At, I'm a business person, and I understand sometimes when uh, hikes are necessary, even though you don't want it to happen, even though you don't want that, but it's, they are necessary parts. So these are the things we have to look at, the big, bigger picture. Are they just doing a hike because uh, they don't have to, or they are doing a hike because that they have to, because right now, all, all over across, but uh, uh, these, these hikes are, 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 are going up. So for me, it, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a dicey one uh, for, for, for me there, but I think uh, we need to look at the bigger picture and find out uh, what are we giving them out uh, today? Is it that they don't have a reason to have this type or is it actually necessary? I think one of the most important things we need to focus on is to ensure that every every place we have this, uh, uh, what do you call, prepared meters are in place so that everybody, whatever you're using, that's actually what you're paying for. Even if you have a hype, but then you have the electricity or and also you have this, uh, how do I put it now? Not just the electricity, you have a, a, a what's the word? What, what's, I just lost my, my, my yeah, train of thought. Of, All right. Of, um, uh, why, why you, why you that recoup? When you don't use it, you don't have to pay for it. All like the, uh, the, uh, the other one, estimated billing that they do. Where, whether you see this light, you don't see this light, you're having to pay a, a huge amount of money. All so right. I think for me, the focus should be more on people are getting their prepaid meter. But oh, you I see, on, on that page, Abidjan, I think for me, one of the touching pictures is, 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 is the picture that is there. Yes, I, the I was going page. to come to that. Let me quickly re recap it for those that are watching that might not have seen the paper. Um, it's a picture from Cross River State. The headline underneath it, that's it on your screen now. Doctors block Gov's office, demand rescue of kidnapped colleague. Um, the, the name of the uh, kidnapped colleague is there 
for you on the screen. Uh, please come on the forest as gunmen abduct a doctor, two others. Unlicensed driver crushes Lagos motorcyclist passenger to death. National Assembly denies receiving 20 million naira palliatives by NDDC. And then uh, from Ondo State, APC faults PDP's allegation of buying voter cards. Um, Registrar's circular on varsity reopening falls, malicious, that's OAU. And then uh, this one, uh, sad again, two policemen killed as truck crashes into Oshomole's uh, convoy. Uh, before I come to you, Aisha, let's give uh, Mr. Akimbola some um, uh, time to pick on any of these um, headlines to speak on quickly. Thank you. I, I would like to talk about the uh, imminent hike of electricity tariff. I, I, I very much believe that this has been on the card for a very long time. And as September 12th or so has been uh, scheduled for its implementation. Sometimes we do say some things are inevitable in Nigeria. We know the cost of providing electricity keeps going up. But again, you may say, where is the electricity? So, okay, so people have the right to complain that, look, we are, we do, we are not even enjoying this electricity. Why are you increasing it? But if you look at the Magodo um, example, the model that has been um, implemented in Magodo, where residents agreed to pay a premium and electricity supply has improved. Okay, if we can replicate what PHD is doing in Magodo, then the, the, the hike may be justified. Okay, but what would be disastrous is for the hike to go on and for, for us not to have um, a commensurate uh, improvement in, 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 in the standard and, and, the, and the quality of power supply. So um, it really may be a situation of where we have no choice, they have to go ahead. Again, you want to talk about if this tariff increase goes ahead, Will the consumers benefit? Again, issues of corruption, exactly. This um, expected increase in tariff, how would it be managed? Will it be invested in provision of, in acquisition of the necessary equipment that will help with power generation and distribution? So it, it, the, 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 so the question is in the air, really. Yes, indeed. Um, Aisha, over to you now. I know you wanted to speak on the uh, doctor's uh, situation. Yes, uh, I, I, I wanted to speak on the doctor's situation. And for me, it's just, it's just the typical Nigerian uh, situation. Now you have the, uh, her colleagues are out, the Provivian uh, Onu that, that has been abducted. I think they say she was taken away in the restaurant. Her colleagues are out, they are demanding for her rescue. They are blocking the, the uh, is it the governor's uh, something? I can't see the... the uh, Block the block governor's Governor's office. office. Yeah. This is what happens. Kidnapping has been going on in Nigeria. Insecurity has been right in Nigeria. We've been saying this thing over and over again. I keep saying that yesterday's victims were once survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors. And tomorrow's victims would be today's survivors. And I always ask, who is next? But because we are a nation of very selfish people, who where people feel that it can never be their portion, because they go to their churches and their mosques to pray. They meet their devious and their alphas and, and all of that and think that their babala was they think it would never happen to them. So they are unconcerned about what is going on. Our professional bodies are sitting down there. Our religious bodies with the numbers they have, they're sitting down there. They're not coming out to, to protest against the insecurity of the country. But they're Aisha, not they, out when they do the come out, all you don't see... Is when they are affected, then they come out to speak. At the end of the day, all of us will be big. Before I go, I just want to say something. I have continuously said that in Nigeria, being a victim is no longer a matter of if, it is a matter of when. The, and there's enough victims are to go around. The question I repeat again, who is next? Indeed, who is next? Um, let's look at what we can um, from the nation newspaper quickly, and then we wrap things up. Um, Discos is here again. NLC man kick as Discos increase electricity tariff. Um, Africa got $78.8 billion AFDB investments. That's uh, additional begins new term, speaking big. Uh, government spends 148 billion naira on two refineries in 13 months. And then uh, the Oshimale's convoy crash is also captured there. And then there is a picture uh, for you. Naira gains 9.7% at parallel market. Federal government can fail to agree on Kama law not against churches. 
Uh, to you, uh, Mr. Akimbola, quickly. Thank you. First of all, let me quickly um, respond to one of the issues that I shall raise, that why is Khan now coming out to talk about this um, karma bill, that why has Khan not been commenting on other, other, other controversial issues? I, 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 I am very much aware that Khan has always um, be commenting. They've always been the forefront advocating for good governance. If not can all the time, I'm aware of some of the uh, can leaders. They've, they've always spoken against bad governance in Nigeria. And again, you, you do not expect can to comment on virtually every law that, that the government passes. Okay, so quickly, Dr. Additional, first of all, congratulations for such a resounding success at the election. Uh, if Africa has gotten almost 79 billion um, dollars investment in agriculture. That is good news on paper. But the question is, what is the impact? Coming back to Nigeria, what is the impact again? Then again, I, I want to talk about the Edo election. The Edo election, um, quite unfortunate, uh, two people died yesterday, the two of the policemen in the convoy of um, Adam Oshoma there. Again, politicians, as they want to do, um, the spokesman for Oshoma said, this is uh, an attempt, to, um, it was an attempt to assassinate him. We, we, we expect the police to probe that incident thoroughly simply because if we do not nip violent acts in the board right now, it's going to be difficult when, 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 when the elections come up. And we keep saying Ondo and Endo elections will really, really, really be test cases for INEC, for the police, for the federal government in terms of how the 2023 elections um, would owe. I want to talk briefly also about the Naira um, gaming. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, let's give um, Aisha some talk time. I'm, I'm told we're out of sorry? time. Mr. Kimbala, let's, um, I'm sorry, let's give um, Aisha some talk time. Uh, we're told uh, to wrap up okay. uh, quickly. Mr. Okay. Um, Aisha. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I, for me, uh, the fact that uh, Khan is speaking loudly, uh, loudly on the camera bill says everything. If they're going to pass on all this, they're not going to speak on all the other bills. Why are they speaking on these particular bills? Uh, for me, it always bears that to that selfishness that we have. Government spent for 448 billion on two refineries in 13 months that did not produce anything. Yeah. And by the way, the Minister of Petroleum is the President, Mohammed Buhari. Corruption happening right under our noses and nothing is being done about it. 148 billion. Imagine if that was good in security, education, health, and all of that, what that would do to Nigeria. Two policemen died in Oshomole's convoy crash. It's a crash. Was it, was it a, sh a shootout or something? It's a crash. Yes, and he says assassination, the corruption where the votes that are not being fixed, things that are supposed to be done, not done. These are convoy that died that drive recklessly as if they don't, they, 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 they can't, that we'll be having a lot of corporate crashes. And for me, you know, maybe school of the dead rest in peace. The big question is, why does Australia have so many security to one person, Why the rest of us, we barely have uh, security uh, that, that we need to do. And on the bottom line, where we have Bajamin Anna to meet Ghana's speaker, it's something that is very, very major. Nigerian traders are being treated unfairly in Ghana, I saw where some of them say they have had to pay up to $1 million, and yet their shops and businesses have not been reopened. Nigeria is a big giant that is being treated anyhow by other African countries, even when it's continuously been that big brother to the rest of Africa. It is time for Nigeria to take to step up on its on its foreign relationship and ensure that citizens are not treated anyhow. All over the world, Nigerian citizens are being treated as if we are crap, and that's not acceptable. All right. Um, I'm afraid that's uh, the time we have for this part of the conversation. I want to thank you both very much uh, for your thoughts and uh, insights uh, on all the headlines and the papers this morning. Uh, Mr. Demola Akimbola, the publisher, the Podium Media, and of course, Aisha Yusufu, co convener, BBOG. Thank you again. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Have a good day. You too. Bye. You too.